So hi, good morning. Welcome to this another series lecture in statistics. So ngayon, in this video, pag-uusapan natin kailan ba dapat gumamit ng pie chart, bar chart, at saka histogram or any other graphical tools when you are going to summarize, organize, and visualize your data. Okay? So, let us get started. Okay, so sa buong module na ito, we are going to use this DORV. So, DORV stands for Define, Organize, and Visualize. So, this is yung uh, reflection ko or yung ginawa kong flowchart based from the discussion of uh, Berenson and his book, uh, Basic Business Statistics Concepts and Applications. So, dito makikita natin kagad if we, are, if we have this type of data, what kind of tools, graphical to graphical tool to visualize our data, such as bar chart, bar chart, and so on and so forth. So to give us a very specific example, let's take a look at some scenarios here. Okay, so for example, you conducted a study and then you asked the participants, let's say 100 participants, to discuss what are the reasons for online shopping. And then later on, uh, Nakita mo yung mga response nila. So, they have a uh, comfortable environment, competitive prices, convenience, uh, customer service, so on and so forth. So, if you are tasked to, let's say, summarize this data, probably by instinct, you are going to, uh, you are going to make this kind of table here. So, ang gagawin mo siguro, for example, yung comfortable environment. So, in this particular case here, ang nakalagay is percentage. So, let's, let's assume na this is numbers or frequency. So, probably, ang gagawin mo dito, for example, comfortable environment, isulat mo comfortable environment. And then, later on, bilangin mo lahat kung ilan yung mga nag-answer na comfortable environment. And then, next is uh, competitive prices. Bilangin mo ulit. And then, so, malalaman mo kung ilan yung mga nag-answer ng competitive prices. So, in this particular case, we have here uh, 20. Okay? So, i-total mo yan lahat, yung assuming na there's no, uh, wala tayong non-response. So, let's assume na the total 100 natin ng mga respondents, ito yung summary natin, summary na table. So, ang tawag pala nito, ang tawag pala na table na to, according to Berenson, uh, he called it summary table. Okay? So, summary table pala ang tawag na ginagawa natin. No? So, by definition, a summary table summarizes categorical or numerical data that gives frequency a proportion or percentage of data values in each category or class. So, as simple as that. So, if we are going to go back sa ating DORV natin, so if we have our data, data natin kanina, reasons, uh, yung categorical data, categorical data yun, right? Kasi yung mga nakalagay doon is reasons. And then, yung number of variables natin is isa lang. Yung variable natin in that particular case is yung reason for online shopping. Yun lang yung variable natin. And then, yung mga answers na yun, yun yung mga items natin under that particular variable. Okay? So, how are we going to organize the time of data? We are going to use summary table. Okay? So, as what we have shown a while ago. So, how are we going to or organize, uh, to visualize our data? So, according to this table, according to Berninson, there are three possible options that we can do. Okay? So, we can do bar chart, we can do pie chart, and we or we can do Pareto chart. But in this short video, ang discuss lang natin is yung very common, yung bar chart at saka pie chart. So, I will give it as an assignment sa inyo kung ano ba yung Pareto chart. But it's a very uh, useful tool, uh, also a very useful tool. Okay? So, let's start with bar chart. So, yung bar chart yung makikita natin is like this one. So, I believe you already encountered this type of chart. So, basically... Uh, it is a graphical representation of the summary table for categorical data. So the length, the length of each bar represents the proportion, the frequency, the frequency or percentage of data values in a category. So basically, pag titingnan natin tong uh, graph na ito, madali lang natin makita that the may, one of the the most common reason is convenience. So our participants in our study are using or using online shopping because it is convenient to use. Okay, so the other graph that we can use according to the Dorby that we had a while ago is we can also do yung pie chart, itong pie chart na ito. So, sir, how are we going to decide if we are going to do uh, yung bar chart or yung pie chart ba? So, let's take a look at the definition here. So, a pie chart is a graphical representation of a summary table for categorical data. 
So with each category represented by a slice of a circle in which of which the area represents the proportion or percentage share of the category relative. So the keyword here is relative. Relative to the total of all categories. So you want to compare that certain proportion to the totality of the response. So ibig sabihin makikita mo dito na ah okay yung convenience pala ang laki ng ang laki ng share niya sa total na sa total na pie, right? And then we can also see at ah, the products well displayed is very very short proportion. So you can see directly in this diagram here, in this graph here na yung mga proportion nila with respect to the total to the total responses of our of our uh, respondents. Okay, so yan yung uh, bar chart, ay ah, yung pie chart. Okay? So, eto naman tayo. What if yung another scenario natin dito? What if ganito yung scenario natin? So, these are the prices of uh, main meal at 50 restaurants for uh, city at saka yung sa baba is yung sa suburban. Okay, so, as what we can see in this diagram here, so yung dalawang graph na, uh, dalawang data natin dito are numerical in nature. Okay, so numerical yan. So, let's go back to our Dorvi to decide what type of tool that we can use to organize at visualize this type of numerical data. So, we have the data. Yan yung data natin. And then, numerical in nature. And then, isa lang. Kasi prices of meals. And then, so, based from this uh, result here, so we have two main options. So, we can do yung ordered array. Ito yung pinaka-basic. Pinaka-basic. And then the other one, we can do the frequency distribution. And then, yung cumulative distribution, basically, you can just came up with that after you got, you already have your frequency distribution. So, madali na lang yan. So, yung ordered array, let's start first with ordered array. Okay? Yung ordered array, basically, guys, itong pinakamadali. So, as what you can see here, medyo uh, hindi pa siya naka-arrange. So, the best way, the, the very simple way is to arrange it from smallest to largest. So, from that Diagram, so mangyayari yan, ganito na. So, nag-start na siya ng 14, 22, 23. So, na-order na lang. So, that is why it, we call it ordered array. So, naka-order lang siya. As simple as that. Okay? And then, if you are going or, if you are going to use ordered array, the, uh, visualize, the visualization tool that we can use is yung tinatawag nating stem and leaf display. Okay? Yung stem and leaf display... Uh, normally, hindi na natin to visual uh, normally nakikita sa mga research papers. But we can see it as an output dun sa normality testing natin later on sa ating SPSS. But the concept of the stem and leaf display basically is ganito lang yan. In your particular number, let's say 6.35, kukuha ka lang ng stem. So in this, prob in this particular problem here, yung stem na nandit na ni-require is yung dollars, yung whole number of dollars. So, in this particular case here, 6.35, yung stem natin is yung 6. Yan. And then, yung leaf unit, based on the problem, of per 10 cents. So, i-round off natin to into 10 cents. So, this is a 6.4. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, the 6 is our stem, the 0.4 or the 4 is our leaf. Okay? So, the 4 is our leaf. So, yan na yan. Okay, this 4 here represents that 6.4. Okay, and then let's try another one. Let's say the 6, this one, the 6.05. Okay, so yung 6.05 natin, pag i-round off natin yan, that is 6.1. Okay, so yung 6 natin, nandito yan, yung sa stem natin, and then the 1 will be uh, tallied dito sa ating leaf. So this is the 1. 1 here. So basically, last example, let's say we have the 10. Okay? Yung 10 natin dito, i-round off natin yan, that is 10.7. So, yung 10 natin dito, we will consider that one as our stem, and then yung 7 natin as our leaf. So, itali natin siya dito as 7. Okay? So, yeah. So, that is how you do the stem and leaf display. But, don't you worry guys, in this, uh, in this course, uh, I will not require you to do it manually. We will try to maximize, we will try to utilize uh, the technology, okay? Nandiyan na naman yan. So, how are we going to do it using Excel or any other statistical software? So, yan. Padaliin natin yung buhay natin. Okay, so yan yan. But, in this particular case, yung nakikita natin dito, mara masyadong maraming data. Okay? Um, so, pag ginawa mo yung ordered array at ginawa mo yung steam and leaf display, uh, baka masyadong, mara ma masyadong cluttered yung data natin. And then, take note guys, 
the point of why we are using statistics because we want to make sense out of that data. So kung hindi ka makakuha ng proper interpretation of that particular graph, maybe we need to use another graph. So in this particular case here, what we can do is we can use yung tinatawag natin frequency distribution. I think that this is not new to you guys. Uh, I think you are also using this one kahit nasa uh, junior high or senior high kayo. So in this particular case, uh, Berenson defines it as a, a frequency distribution is a summary table in which the data are arranged into a numerically ordered classes or intervals. So hindi na siya as an individual, as an item, but as a class. Okay? So the formula, the formula there is Basically, ganito yung itsura natin. Okay? So, ang classes natin is 10 but less than 15, 15 but less than 20, so on and so forth. So, ang tawag natin dito sa 10 but less than uh, 15, we call that one as uh, class, classes. Okay? Classes yan. And then, yung width ng 10 at saka 15, so in this particular case, or 15 minus 10, that is 5 units. So, ang tawag natin yan is class width. So, how do we define, how are we going to know the class width. So, we are going to use this formula here. So, the class width is just the range. The range, the, max, the formula of range is just get the max, what is the maximum response, okay? The maximum, so in this particular case here, around 60 siguro, uh, 65, 64, 65, kasi 65 yung nilagay niya, and then the lowest value is uh, 14. So, nandun, 14, nandito 14, okay? So, this is, the range is just the highest, minus the lowest, okay, over the number of classes. So, number of classes is, yung range ng number of classes natin, according to Berenson, uh, we can only decide between 5 to 15. Okay, 5 to 15 lang. Do not make a number of classes na masyadong marami. And then, also, don't use classes na tatlo lang. Okay, so the best way is you have to choose the number of classes between 50, uh, between 5 and 15. 15. So, don't you worry guys. Again, I will not require you to do this manually. So, I will teach you later on sa ating laboratory, how are you going to do it using Excel? Excel or SPSS. But I think it would be very essential for you to do it on Excel. Masyadong madali lang ito. Okay? Yan. So, given na ito yung, uh, frequen uh, ito yung frequency distribution natin. By the way guys, yung frequency distribution, importante na alam natin to. Kasi normally guys, yung sa research paper natin later on, frequency distribution ang gagamitin natin. Okay? So, if you have frequency distribution based on this Dorby here, uh, so yan, frequency distribution, the most common, the most common na ginagamit natin to visualize that data is yung histogram. Histogram yan. Okay? So, yung histogram basically looks like this. So, again, I will not require you to draw a histogram kasi hindi naman tayo nasa elementary class na gawa pa tayo ng mga manual-manual na -manual Let the software do and we will focus more on the interpretation of that particular graph. Okay? So, histogram normally gagamitin natin to when we are going to test the normality and as the assumptions of normality of our data. Okay? So, yan. Importante yan. Yung sa normal distribution natin later uh, in the later chapters. Okay? So, yan. Yan yung histogram natin. Next is, yan. Okay. So, what if ito yung data natin? Ito din very, very useful tool. What if you have uh, two variables na? So, in this particular case here, the bedrooms. Okay? In that particular hotel, yung ilan ba yung number of bedrooms niya? So, in this case, isa lang. And then next is tatlo, tatlong bedrooms. Okay? And then yung location niya, either town or uh, rural. So, in this particular case here, we can treat these uh, bedrooms as categorical. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, a uh, one, uh, one bedroom hotel and two, uh, three bedroom hotel. Something like that. So, pwede natin itong makonsider as a categorical variable. So, in this particular case, how are we going to uh, summarize or visualize this particular data? Okay? Pag two variables na, we can do this one. Ito yung pinakamaganda. Yung tinatawag nating uh, contingency table or uh, cross classification or other term, tinatawag itong cross tabulation. Okay? Wherein, pinagsama mo yung dalawang variables, okay? Dalawang variables, and then, to highlight or to really dissect, to dissect kung ano ba yung, baka may importante pa tayong data na nakalintaan. So, in this particular case here, yung example is this one. Okay, so from this table, we can easily see that uh, 
both the rural at saka town na mga hotels, the most common is, eto, 16 and 29. So, ibig sabihin, 3 bedroom. Okay? So, kahit nasa rural or sa town, town ka pa, the most common hotels, yung mga available nila, is 3 bedroom na hotel. Okay? So, how are we going to visualize this one? Okay? Kasi mas maganda guys, I'm a visual person, I really want to look at it. Mas madali kong makita. So, according to Dorby, so yung data natin, ganyan, and then categorical variable, and then dalawang categorical variable, and then we use the contingency table, okay, or the cross tabulation, and then we can do yung tinatawag nating side-by-side -side chart. Okay? So, ano bang itsura ng side-by-side -side chart? Yan. So, yan yung itsura ng side-by-side -side chart natin. Okay? I think this is not new to you. Okay? I think you already encountered this type of chart. Okay? So, visually, makikita natin agad na yung 3-bedroom na mga hotels, marami. Itong 3-bedroom it, hotel, hotels, uh, ito yung pinaka-common either in rural or in town, in city. Yan, makikita natin dyan. Okay? So, next. Okay, so let's take a look at this another example here. So, yung bedrooms natin dito, let's treat this one as a numerical again. Numerical. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then yung asking price, we, of course, that is numerical variable. So, yan, two numerical variables na yung nandito yung sa, research, yung sa study natin. So, according to Dorvi again, we have our data. So, numerical, we have two. So, we can do... To visualize our data, we can do scatter plot at saka time series plot. Okay? So, yan. So, let's take a look. So, ito yung bedrooms natin. And then, yan. I-plot mo lang yan. Sa Excel, you are going to have this type of chart. Okay? So, yan na yan. May mga dots-dots na yan. And then, Excel or any other statistical software will create an estimated line. A regression line. Later on, we will use this regression line to predict the, let's say, uh, the asking price based on the number of bedrooms. Later on, we will do it in our discussion of our simple regression analysis. But visually speaking, we can take a look na yung relationship nito is direct relationship, direct positive relationship. Ibig sabihin, uh, if other variable increases, the other variable also increases. So in this particular case, if the number of bedrooms increases, so the number, the asking price also increases. Okay, so yan na yan. Yung uh, time series plot naman, normally, yung sa dito, yung sa x-axis natin is, yung values natin dito is dates or time, time stamps. Okay, so if you have some questions or clarifications, please comment down below and I will try to answer your questions as soon as I can. So good luck and see you.